another episode of the Cam Johal Show. So you join us here in our studios in West Bromwich today. So as we've always promised you, bring great guests who are very inspirational people of our community, all sorts of backgrounds and all sorts of professions and different ideas about what entrepreneurship is and what leadership is. And uh, today my guest is a very, very special friend of mine and uh, came all the way from London and he has a very traditional bit, uh, background in terms of profession, but he also has a very, very interesting business story that he will be sharing with us, hopefully. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Vinay Palmer. Thank you, Kangi Kams. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's an honor, it's a privilege you know, to be here and be talking to you. I know, everybody says that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. <laughs> Vinay, where does the story start? So, you know, uh, your family, where's, where's the background from? Where are you guys originally from? Yeah, so mum and dad are from Punjab, yeah. uh, Gurdaspur. Um, they came around 1970s, 1980s. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, started, uh, they got married here actually. Okay. And um, I was born in 1980s, I don't give my age away. Um, and then, you know, did what mum and dad said to do, which was, you know, we didn't get a great education, you know, back home. You've got an opportunity here, you know, amazing country, you know, do the traditional route and you know, go to school, get good grades and work for a well-established company yeah. or, or become somebody, you know, become a doctor or a doctor. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's the scenario is they want you to have the things that they didn't have and, and get into, you know, a job or get into something which can, um, you know, in their eyes be respectable. Look, it's understandable, isn't it? Because our parents, you know, grandparents, faced a lot of discrimination. So a lot of people were qualified for far better jobs than they ended up with in this country. Yeah. And I've spoken before, I've got uncles who were qualified as lawyers and barristers in India mm. and came and did manual jobs here. Yeah. So color of our skin and you know whether we wore, wore a turban or not really yes. mattered. So you know, youngsters will not be aware of any of this yeah. um, who have not seen it or obviously why would they be? Mm -hmm. And so I think this yearning for our community you know, we had a, a, a beautiful gentleman on the show this morning who was talking about that very same thing, about how Indian parents, what they go through to educate their children. Of course. Yeah. And we may not like it at the time, yeah, but they just want the best, don't they? Absolutely. Yeah. Right? And all those professions that, you know, we joke about sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, from a status point of view, doctors, lawyers, mm. you know, accountants, you know, they're very, very safe professions, aren't they? Yeah, that's, I mean, that was probably one of the reasons yeah. from them to, you know, advise me. And, you know, you, you do what your parents do. I mean, my dad did business. So in the back of my mind, I did actually want to go into business, mm -hmm. some kind of business. You know, I saw my dad, he had been a market trader uh, for 10 years mm -hmm. uh, in the east of London. And I knew that, you know, he, he, he had properties thereafter. He bought some properties in the 90s. And I knew ultimately that was where I was going to go. But I did go down the law route, so I went to uh, law school, mm -hmm. and eventually, finally, I wasn't the best student, but I just, I just failed my way <laughs> to eventually becoming a solicitor. Okay. Um, I was called to the bar actually in 2011, so I actually wanted to be a barrister initially, uh, and then um, it didn't kind of transpire. Mm -hmm. So I thought, let me cross qualify and become a solicitor, and which I'm a solicitor today. Okay, excellent. So you specialise in criminal law? Yes, criminal okay. law. And how's that working out? Well, you, you meet interesting people. Mm -hmm. uh, you meet uh, people who are accused of, of various things. Yeah. So you can imagine, I mean, um, you know, much of my corporate life spent in um, police stations or magistrates' courts, uh, crown courts, um, sometimes prisons, um, because we're representing clients yes. uh, who are accused of, of a crime. And it could, be, it could be an array of crimes and, uh, you know, giving legal advice. And that's what we do. Okay. So... That would be enough for most people, wouldn't it? You know, mm. you, you've got one of the recognised professions, mm. the box has been ticked. Mum and Dad are very proud. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I've been, eh? He's become mm. a solicitor. Yeah. But, you know, that wasn't enough for you, was it? No, I mean, like I said, because maybe I saw my mum and dad do mm -hmm. business and I wanted to also do a business. Okay. Um, I, I, I just felt that there was um, more to life than doing what I was doing. And I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. Um, you know, the uh, scenario, Monday to Friday, nine to five. Mm -hmm. I didn't see myself doing that, you know, when I'm 50 or 60 years old. 
and I knew business, uh, you know, business owners, they live a, or what they seem to be a certain lifestyle. And, and I wanted to just have my own business, so I have the freedom. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but my dad used to advise me against it. And actually, I was thankful to my dad because he would say to me, no, you know what, you've got a chance to be, uh, you know, going to education, go and become a solicitor, go and become a lawyer. Mm-hmm. So I did go down the route, but in the back of my mind, I did want something more out of life. Do you think, because I see this quite a lot, you know, uh, back in the day of when I was an IFA, mm. used to advise small to medium sized companies, mm. probably Asian owned in Leicester. And the, the business owners would try and usher their children away from becoming business people mm. and entrepreneurs in, mm. in their own field. Yeah. So do you think that was something to do with the fact that our parents, you know, they're, they're obviously working very, very long hours mm. in their own mm. businesses, that they felt that they were perhaps not in the business of their choice? Uh, perhaps not making quite as much money as they wanted to make or they knew they could make, mm. uh, that somehow that going to be in the traditional professions mm. Mm. would be something that would be easier for their children to achieve? Yeah, I think um, definitely mm. in that respect. But also because they, well, my parents especially, felt that they didn't have the education and yeah. they couldn't do those things. And in their eyes, those professions are, you know, job, job for life. Mm. And, and you looked after, there's many benefits. And in my dad, I mean, this is maybe a, um, a typical Asian mentality where you, you know, you may do your business five or six days, but you're actually doing it seven days because yes. you're 24 hours thinking about the business. You know, there's a saying my dad used to say to me that a businessman sleeps with his worries. So he used to deter me away from business. Mm-hmm. But I, I, you know, I was only going to do what my parents did rather than what they said. So I did go down that traditional route, mm-hmm. but I, I knew business was something I really wanted to do. And I didn't know what business though, Cam. I sure. didn't know what, but I knew okay. something. Okay, so something mm. was inside, brewing. yeah, brewing up. And you yeah. thought, mm. it's, it's interesting mm. because, you know, up until about 15, mm. you know, I wanted to be an architect. All right. And then, you know, I met Uncle Roshan and um, he was a market trader. Okay. And, you know, and from that moment, Soon as I started talking to him yeah. and, and about, he had a beautiful car, yeah. private registration plate and all those kind of mm. things, I, that was it. You know, I, the bug had hit me right. and I, di- I didn't want to work for anybody from, from that age onwards. Okay. So was, it, was that a little bit like you, you're talking about? Was something inside that was brewing? Yeah, I mean, because my dad transitioned um, from market trader mm-hmm. where, I mean, my dad did something which at the time, um, family and friends were saying, you're making a bit of a mistake. I mean, he bought around, um, say, four to five semi-commercial properties mm-hmm. and, and pretty much on credit cards, <laughs> pretty much. Um, but uh, from 94 to 2004, he sold and he retired. Yeah, I was going to say, what a move, huh? And, yeah, and, and everyone afterwards was like, oh, your dad, you know, well done. You know, my uncle, the mama, geez, and tell you, oh, well done, your dad done it. At the time, there was a different story. Yes. So I thought, my dad's retired at this age and, you know, he can live now a certain lifestyle where he doesn't have to go to work. Mm-hmm. That was more appealing to me. Okay. He wasn't into maybe uh, the private plates and the cars. I think I'm into that more <laughs> than he is. <laughs> so you decide that you want to do something, but you don't know what. So how did you begin to think about what it was that you wanted to do? So, um, you know, you get advice from you know, family and of friends. Course. And, you know, one of my uh, good friends, he said, oh, look, you know, become a solicitor and start your own law firm. Mm-hmm. So you have your own business. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and that's what I was going to do until I saw that the um, senior partners at my law firm, the kind of hours they would work and what they would do and, and the age of their, you know, what they're doing at that age, mm. I, I thought, I can't do this either. So I remember actually, it was back in 2010, 2011, I wrote down on a piece of paper, because my dad had properties. Yes. And I said, Dad, you know, if one of the properties we can vacate, I can, and I wrote down all these business ideas from, uh, sweet shop to, you know, um, car parts and, and fire, I mean, whatever I could think of. Yeah. And I was on the verge of doing something. I said, you know, Papa, I'm going to do something. I'll, I'll sell subject if I have to. You know, I, I, I just want to start a business. Um, but what happened was, fortunate for me, it's a crazy story. I was at the gym and a friend of mine said, I hadn't seen him in a while, and he just randomly said to me, uh, Vinay, you want to make some money? And business was on my mind. Yes. And I said, well, yeah, you know, sure. You know, I didn't know what was going on. And he invited me to his house. Mm-hmm. And that was built trust. I had known him for a good few years. And he showed me a presentation. 
uh, for a, a business, a business startup uh, with no money. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any money. Okay. So I loved what I saw and I said, you know, I'm going to get started in this. And I think that's where the turning point happened. So I abandoned the other ideas with the shop, the traditional route, and I went into more entrepreneurship. Okay. So um, how did that go? It was, it was a learning curve. Uh, I got to meet successful people in the industry. Mm -hmm. I, I learned a lot. Um, it was a company which had uh, products and services in Malaysia and Southeast Asia, and they were distributing, and it had a network marketing model attached to it. Okay. So you, you immediately had, um, you could say, mentors or senior business partners, and they were teaching you how to do the business and more about the mindset of how you need to think. And I, Cam, I fell in love with that. Okay. I, I fell in love with personal self-development. I, I thought to myself, wow, I've never, I've never been taught this in school. No. 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 So I, I did that for three years. Okay. Great experience, um, but didn't make much money. I don't think I actually made any money. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did you invest much money? Well, the only investment, there was no investment in the business. Yes, you were saying. But products and services had to be purchased to enter. Okay. Okay. So maybe I spent uh, you know, a few thousand on the products and services okay. at that particular time. Okay. And maybe I made a few thousand back in, in three years. Okay. So I didn't actually, maybe I broke even, you could say. Yeah. Quite possible. Used a term there, which um, I see quite a lot in business: network marketing. Yeah. And in this country, you know, mm. it brings out all sorts of emotions in people. And usually, if they've made money at it, it's great. Mm. And if they haven't, then it's not so great, it's right? Great, yeah. It's natural. Yeah. So, for for the sake of um, our audience, what mm. what is network marketing? Well, it's the the. It's actually in the title. So you're marketing a product mm -hmm. through a network. Yes. So you know products and services need to be distributed, and the traditional route is you know you would advertise or you'd have your shop on the high street, or you'd advertise on now it'll be social media. Mm -hmm. but, you know before it may have been newspapers predominantly. Of course. Uh, bulletin boards, advertisements on TV, and to cut a long story short, the cost of that would be quite substantial, mm -hmm. especially for big companies or even small companies. Yeah. You're going to have to have a marketing budget. Uh, network marketing is actually referral-based marketing. Okay. Where rather than you advertise any other shape or form, those costs you're paying to people who are happy customers, who use the product, who see the value there, and then they refer it, and the company obviously earn money, and they give you a piece, a percentage, you could say. Okay. So, I mean, I read, and, and that's how I've gotten to this point. So mm. about 400 books and mm. counting. Um, so the normal traditional business methods, mm. you know, and, and people look at network marketing in quite negative yeah. uh, tones sometimes. That's right. But again, you know, for the sake of our viewers, what happens with a normal product, and it doesn't really matter what it is, it's manufactured. Mm. Yeah. So it's then maybe there's an agent involved in selling that product to a distribution company, mm -hmm. um, goes to a warehouse or wholesale type operation. And it goes through six or seven stages before it gets to the end user. Yeah. So I've always thought of that as also being a network. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so many people take the profit that we pay for the goods that finally end up in the high streets and in our hands, right? Absolutely. So instead of those profits going to corporations, mm. they're going to a referral-based system. Yeah. And so, and the other thing that I always like about network marketing is that if I like something, mm. And I introduce it to somebody else. Mm. If I'm in, if I'm part of that network, mm. I actually get paid. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not a, um, a one-off income. Yeah, it's actually a reoccurring, yeah. what we call a passive income, which uh -huh. means you essentially you're building a network. So if the product or service is distributed through that network, you will keep receiving an income. Fantastic. So it's not like uh, traditional, where you know, for example, in law, if I represent a client, well, I'll get paid for that client. And then for me to earn more money, I'll have to represent another client. Mm. And then it's, it's, it's a cycle which yeah. doesn't end until, yes. unless you retire. Where in network marketing, once you have built a, a network, then the income, because a product or service is being sold either through you know, a repeat purchase or through a subscription, you, are keep on, you keep on getting compensated, basically. Fantastic. So I was part of a referral system through my car company. So I drive a Tesla. Mm. And Elon Musk very nicely pays you a referral bonus if you, any of your um, friends want to buy a car, mm. which is great because prior to that, I've heard other makes of cars and people have said, is it nice? And yeah, mm. great. Yeah. 
But did I get anything for that? Nothing. Oh, nothing. So Elon mm. sends me a check for £750 mm. every time I refer somebody, mm. which is fantastic. That's fantastic, yeah. You know, mm. so people ask about the car. So it's mm. actually nice making up that money. Yeah. Similar kind of thing for network marketing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it is the same way, you know, the company's going to just give you, rather than pay for all the advertising, we call it the mad cost, marketing, yeah. advertising, distribution. They'll save on that and pay us instead. But as you mentioned, Cam, uh, there is a certain uh, stigma attached to it. Mm. People would think of things, you know, they, they mistakenly think of network marketing as something else. Yes. Um, possible scams or, or things that have had a negative um, you know, outcome in the past. Um, but if people realize that there are companies which have been around since 1950s, 1960s, yeah. long standing, and they use, I mean, network marketing is used in pretty much everything. Yes. It's the model is used in every kind of corporate structure you could think of. Yeah. I was looking, obviously, uh, with the view of um, meeting you today. Um, Amway is 50 or 60 years old. Yeah. So one of the biggest networking biggest. companies. So their sales revenue in 2019 was £8.8 .8 billion. Pounds. Wow. So mm. incredible, right? Absolutely Great success. Yeah. So absolutely fantastic in terms of what happens. Okay. So... You, you find a company, you spend a number of time, uh, years there, invest some money, yeah. make a bit of money, so nothing really happens there. Yeah. So what happened next? What's the next part of your journey? Well, I, I actually, I, when I started the company, uh, and, and the stigma was with me as well, Cam. Sure, of course. You know, I thought, well, because it's my friend who approached me. Mm. So I had trust in my friend, and I thought, you know, I'm going to learn a lot. And I love the way he presented to me. Mm -hmm. So I attended the meetings, and I realized that I'm going to, get this thing called a mindset, and which is basically you know, how you think. So I became, after I stopped the company, I became very heavily involved in personal self-development. Okay. I mean, Cam, there wouldn't have been a course which I wouldn't have attended, and then I would pay for it. And I think I've paid, including my degree, I've probably spent, I'd say, close to six figures, if not more, in personal self-development. And they had started to range from uh, Bob Proctor's course to uh, Tony Robbins, uh, to NLP, I did a Forex trading course, a social media marketing course, um, hypnosis course, I mean anything I could get my hands on, landmark. So I became you know, very much involved in personal self-development. And then I, in law, I immediately, during my, because I was still working part-time as a trainee, um, I quit my job and became self-employed. So I, I realized that you know, I could earn more money if I was to work for myself. Okay. And then what transpired was, it, I mean, that period there was tough because when I went self-employed, I didn't have any clients. Of course. So money was, I mean, that was probably the time where I, I you know, I've been the most broke at that time in my life. Okay. That time. So I just started network marketing while well, I finished it and I had the mindset, but I didn't have any money. But I had a dream and I had a goal. So I started to uh, pick up clients and, and develop a certain clientele with firms, relations. And then what happened was it, it kind of exploded. I, I got so many clients. I started to earn uh, over six figures. I ended up um, actually having a law agency mm -hmm. where I subcontracted other lawyers. And around that time I got married and my wife was kind of um, my PA as well. She was working with me. She would, she would call uh, lawyer firms and, and build relations. So, uh -huh. I, And I realized that I, these things have transpired because of all the personal self-development that had started from that initial network marketing company. Mm. So that's where I ended up um, earning good money in law. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Because I always think that when you go for one of these weekends, and I've been to many of these courses, as, as have you, and, and many, many other people, mm -hmm. is that you just don't know that one nugget of information that you're going to pick up. Yes. You know, you don't go for a weekend and, and have this magic epiphany that everything trans transforms over that weekend. Uh, but you pick up information, don't you? Yeah. And then you mm -hmm. come and utilize it. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, these strategies that you thought weren't going to work right. suddenly start falling into place, don't they? Absolutely, yeah. It's, right? it's, you're right. it's just these small things can give you that popcorn moment. Mm. And it triggers you into a whole different world almost. Yes. Because whilst I was um, self-employed, I mean, when I left the law firm, you know, my, my colleagues and, and, and the senior partners were like, you're making a mistake. What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> you're just about to qualify, or you just qualified, yes. and you're leaving? You know, my parents were like, uh, are you, you know, so-and-so son said that you're doing God knows what, you know? Yes. And, you know, I, sooner or later, started to earn, uh, not to sound in a bad way, but two or three more times than they were earning. Yes. And you were the same age, and I started to earn similar to what the senior partners were earning almost at one point. 
So, it, and it, it all came back to, like you said, picking up nuggets and just learning from people who have the results, who, who are super successful. Yeah. Learning from those people. And really and truly, it's not easy for lawyers to do, especially. Sure. But you've got to humble yourself and say, you know what, someone has something that I don't have. And if I want to learn, I need to humble myself and listen to that person and learn from them. Being a good student is, is part of everybody's job, I think. Yeah. You know, and we can always learn. And um, you know, that never ends, especially for me. Mm-hmm. So there's always things to pick up every single day of the week, right? Yeah. Okay, so was that the business that you're in now? Or was that a, mm. a precursor to this? So then what happened was, uh, yeah. so this is the middle part of the story. Now we're getting to current affairs. Okay, let's say. I can't wait. Um, <laughs> so I, I've started to earn six figures. Yes. But in the back of my mind, Cam, I knew that one individual can only get so far. Mm-hmm. But with a team of people, you can get much further. Absolutely. And I thought, if I can earn six figures, I can definitely earn seven figures. Mm-hmm. But I need another vehicle. Mm-hmm. I need another vehicle. Now, I did a course on Forex. And the course is great. But I ended up paying tens of thousands for the course. What's Forex? So Forex is short for foreign exchange. Mm-hmm. It's the exchange of currencies. So for example, um, you know, if we were to go to India, you know, we'd have to exchange the pound for Indian rupees. Yes. Now, as soon as we do that, we've taken part in the foreign exchange. Okay. We didn't do it maybe to make money. Of course. Well, we need, you know, to go to a different country, we need different currencies. Absolutely. Yeah. But if we were to stay in India for one week, for example, and we take, I don't know, a thousand pounds worth of rupees, we stay in India for one week, but we don't spend any money. When we come back, when we go to exchange our rupees for pounds, we're not going to get the exact same amount back because the currency has fluctuated in price. So we could have earned money, or we could have lost money. Mm. And that's what we do. It's trading, but we don't do it physically. We do it on a foreign exchange market, which is what governments and banks and hedge funds are doing. You know, banks are doing it with our money, that's governments right. are doing it, then we pay tax. So you're buying and selling currency on the fluctuation of currency. So it can go in your favor, and you can trade more than currency. Of course. You can trade um, gold, silver, precious metals, yeah. commodities, uh, indices, mm. cryptocurrency. Yeah. You can trade a whole range of things on the foreign exchange market. Yes, and it's huge, isn't it? You know, we, we think of, I mean, America's the biggest stock market in the world, mm. but the foreign exchange market is many, many times larger, isn't it? Absolutely, I mean, stocks and shares, they're into the billions. Yes. Forex is into the trillions. Wow. And you're talking a market which has 6.6 trillion traded every single day. Incredible. And when I heard that, I thought, who is trading? I wanna know. And then, you know, when you start to um, learn about it more, banks are trading our money. They're the biggest players. Of course. Um, And governments and and hedge funds. And now what we are called is retail traders. Mm -hmm. I mean, to average ordinary people like us, we can also learn and we can also trade. Okay. So I did a course on that. And I only did it because a friend of mine uh, had done a course. Yeah. And I remember saying to him, I go, you know, what do you do? And he says, I do Forex. And as soon as he said that word, Cam, Forex, I said, well, for, for your ex? <laughs> what does that even mean? Yes. And, I, and the first thing I said, look, I, I'm not good at maths. I can't do this. And he said to me, Vinay, you can do this. Mm-hmm. And I realize now why he said that is because he know I had gone through a certain level of personal self-development and he gave me confidence. Okay. And I ended up paying tens of thousands for that course. And I, I still hadn't become profitable. But in 2016, 2017, uh, I met a mentor of mine, now mentor, mm-hmm. but a person who had um, joined a company where you learn about foreign exchange trading okay, and, and main, a range of other things as well. And you can have network marketing attached to it so you can market the product. Okay. And I immediately said to him, well, I've paid over like, tens of thousands for this. And I want to see because the, the cost of that particular company was a fraction of it. Okay. I mean, a fraction of the cost. So I wanted to know, uh, intriguedness, and I've, I've always been curious, Cam, about everything. Of course. Uh, my curiosity will drive me to great lengths mm-hmm. to know about what's going on. So I said, how can the company charge this much when I've paid X amount? So I actually joined and I said, I'm not going to do the network marketing, by the way, okay. because I had already done it and yeah. I had a certain experience. So the network marketing was a no-go, um, but I wanted to see what this was all about and how they're going to teach you. And when I saw it, Cam, I couldn't believe what I paid tens of thousands for Companies charging a couple of hundred. Wow. And they're giving you the exact same education, if not more. Wow. 
So that so you joined this company. So I joined that company okay. initially just to um, see what it's all about. Sure. See how they teach you trading. Uh, but my wife, who I actually met in network marketing in 2013, I'll get the date right. <laughs> uh, I think she's watching as well. Uh, we actually met in in the company actually abroad in Malaysia. You know the exact date. Um, Cam, why would you ask me that on TV? <laughs> Because you said she's watching. Yes, it, it was a date in, in, in uh, some time, April. Okay. Uh, is, is that a good enough? I don't know. If you get dinner tonight, yeah, then, then it was yeah. okay. If you don't, then, <laughs> then we'll know. <laughs> then we'll know. <laughs> so I met her in network marketing. So she loved the concept of network marketing and she continued even when I'd stopped. Yeah. So when we joined this new company, she would network. I wasn't so involved in the networking. Okay. I thought, well, I'll just trade. But she started to earn some money. Okay. Now, Three years, no money, all of a sudden she's earning money. And it costs a fraction of what the previous... A fraction, yes. Okay. And in my mind, when I went to uh, learn Forex, I immediately thought, well, if they can charge you tens of thousands to teach you, yeah. why can't we also get involved in some kind of teaching platform? Yeah. So I took an interest in networking as well. And then I, I spoke to some of my colleagues, family and friends, and things started to transpire. Why? Because the what you're learning is so powerful for an exchange. I mean, my two-year-old, you know, somehow I put the screens in front of him. I don't know what's going in, but hopefully subconsciously something's <laughs> going in. I want him to be entrepreneurial. I want him to know how financial markets move. Yes. So I, I started to get involved and from there, things started to then transpire. Okay. Mm. So you start networking and you start trading FX. And what happens? What so you've been at that for what, four years now? Four years now, yeah. Okay. So tell me what the early days were like. Mm -hmm. And then, because you continued to practice law, didn't you? Yes. So I was still full time. Yeah. Because I needed at least, or something equivalent, yeah. or close to six figures. Yes. Because that's what I was earning in law. Mm. So I started to trade and network. Okay. And what happened was the um, numbers started to grow. Okay. And then we started to make trips in Europe. Uh, I remember our first country we went to was Ireland. Mm -hmm. Then we went to um, Norway, um, uh, then it was uh, Netherlands. And this was to set up networks in those countries, wasn't it? Yeah, a distribution of, of network. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because what happened was, we were not only we were trading and making money from the foreign exchange markets, mm -hmm. but we were also showing other people how to do it. Yes. And then they were saying, well, this is amazing. I've got a so-and-so friend in wherever. Uh -huh. And then we started to, you know, European countries, we started to go to Kenya, Uganda, um, we went to the US frequently because it was a US based company, different states. And you know, the team from 10, 20 turned into a few hundred. Okay. It turned into a few thousand. Right. And it, it soon, I think within a year, within 10 months, it actually took over my law income. It actually okay. went over six figures. Okay. And then I thought to myself, do I really need to do law? <laughs> but the Indian in me said, I want to be qualified. <laughs> <laughs> so I still do go to court. Yes. I, do enough cases to still be qualified, the actual minimum. Yeah. And that way I still keep to keep my, what's called a practicing certificate, which is your license, you could say. Yes. And that's in date. And I always renew it and there's a certain requirement that I have to do, of CPD course. points. Yeah. And I, I still practice, but I do network marketing, I do Forex trading full time. Okay. So that's giving you an international business? Yes. Tell me something, Vinay, because I'm, I'm an entrepreneur through and through. Mm. And one of the things that, you know, I remember having Rajan Sukh from Kickley Road Show in one of my very, very early shows. Mm. So they've traveled the world through being DJs. All right. And perhaps if they'd chosen some other career, mm. that wouldn't have happened. Mm. And, and that's exactly what they alluded to. Yeah. Do you think that you would have traveled to as many countries, um, I mean, holidays mm. apart, oh, okay. in, in any type of law career or any other career as you have now? No, I mean, it, it, it wouldn't happen. I mean, the reason being is because, um, you know, law, as you know, Cam, studying English law, UK doesn't law. doesn't transfer, does it? No. That's right. Unless I do an exam. Mm. And I had enough of exams you know, <laughs> after all those years. So yeah. I'd have to, you know, if I, if I was to go to, for example, California, I'd have to do the Californian bar or the yes. New York bar, for example. So, you know, the clientele, the base was here and traveling would be non-existent. And that's one of my passions, which I'm sure is of yours as well. Yeah. Traveling is, is, is something which I, I, I it's, it's my passion. I love to travel. And when I f found out that I could actually travel for business and pleasure, it's, it's a win-win situation. I, yeah. I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Yes. 
And it's claimable on tax, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly. a bonus. So how many countries um, is your business in now? Uh, I think at least eight to ten. Wow. Eight to ten. And I think I've travelled to at least 30 countries yeah. in, in a very short space yes. in the last four or five years. Yeah. Um, building the business. Oh, obviously travelling for personal reasons as well. Of course. But they didn't link into business as well. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like killing two birds with one stone. Okay. Would you change it? For anything? No, I mean, if you had spoken to me uh, a few years ago, and, and that word, it, it would have actually, you know, I would have kept my distance. Yes. Uh, but now I, I embrace it because, not only because of the um, success, but what network marketing can do for your mindset, and the way you start to really, um, you start to open yourself up to a whole new world, entrepreneurship, and you know, having uh, you know, something which I didn't have before. I'll, I'll be even scared to use this word called mentor. Yes. You know, because people look at mentor, well, you know, well, that, it's not an everyday kind of conversation. So I sometimes sugarcoat it with senior business partner. Okay. <laughs> but it is actually a mentor. And, and, and mentor cam, to be honest, is just recognizing that somebody has the success that I may want. And yes. It, it doesn't have to be money. It could be in terms of time or it could be in whatever field it could be. Yeah. You know, for example, I have a, a personal trainer. So he has what it is that I want. Yes. He has a six pack. <laughs> so yes. I want a six pack. So I would listen to him and I would have to, you know, humble myself enough to say, okay, tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. Yeah. And in business, in network marketing, that opens you up. Yeah. So now if I was to do anything, any business, whether it be uh, real estate or whether it be any area, I would actually look for an expert in that field. Yes. And do exactly what they say. Well, what you're doing is you're leveraging their experience and their time. And, and you, you're actually compressing time mm -hmm. in which you can learn that skill. Yes. The thing about mentors and coaches, and, and those terms mm -hmm. are sometimes interchangeable, is that the most successful people in the world mm -hmm. have many, many mentors and coaches, don't they? That's you know, nutritionist, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I suppose a fitness trainer mm -hmm. is probably the most common one that most people would have heard of. Yes. And, you know, and I've used mentors throughout my life, and mentorship doesn't mean that it's a, a real life person. You know, mm, I remember mm. before I went to Tony Robbins, mm. you know, he's got two books, with absolute tombs of books, yeah. Awaken the Giant, I yes. think, and Unlimited Power. Yeah. And I read both of them before I went. All right. Just so that I, I'd get the most out of, out yeah. of the course. So yeah. mentorship doesn't necessarily mean lots of money, which people sometimes equate oh. it to. Because mm. you can pick up a book for six, seven pounds, mm. and it's two, three, four, ten years of somebody's research. Mm gone into that book and today with yeah. audiobooks you know you can have Bill Clinton you can have Obama in the seat of your car narrating their own works right absolutely absolutely so it's invaluable yeah I mean I never forget that you know they said if you read a book by as you mentioned you know mm. Obama or Bill mm. Clinton you're actually in their mind because yes. what they were writing they were thinking and you're yes. thinking what they were thinking yes which is absolutely powerful mm. Um, I mean, I, I've been doing personal development since 2011, and I would say that one thing which has almost superseded that in terms of uh, the books and, and the seminars is having a mentor you can communicate with. Of course. I think that is, is powerful. It's, it's very strong. I think it's almost needed uh, because, you know, a lot of mentors that I, I've had, they're no longer with us. <laughs> you know, yes. they, they passed away. Yes. And you can get a lot of insight in reading. But having someone here now of our time as well, and they will guide you because they have, they've been, you know, not only having the success that we want, but they've been where I've been, or yes. been where we've been, yes. is absolutely quite um, crucial. Yeah, the other thing is, I mean, I, I, as you know, I do one-to-one -one mentorship in, yes. in building business. And so the questions that we get, and, and the reason I don't do groups is because every individual is unique in themselves, yes. yeah. and it's a unique set of problems that they face. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of it's mindset, but, you know, when they come and we have a one-to-one -one session, that's very different to group sessions. Um, so, you know, that uniqueness of the individual and the problems that we can solve, we can do those far quicker. Yeah. You know, but it's like everything, isn't it? You know, the, 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 the less people involved, the more it costs, etc. So sometimes it's not always possible. Yeah. But the best, you know, the Rolls Royce, if you like, is yeah. obviously to have one-to-one -one mentorship. But again, you were saying to me that the great thing about you know, this um, network marketing business mm -hmm. is that the mentorship comes for free, doesn't it? Which is, it, that is so powerful. Mm. People only understand, and, and can, you know, because we, we both love attending courses, and if you were to go to a free seminar, mm. which is fine, 
um, or you may go to a weekend one, which may cost you X amount. Yes. But ultimately, to get a um, year's membership or, or coaching, it, it costs you into the thousands. Yes, of course. And if not the thousands, it will cost you into the tens of thousands. And, you know, Tony Robbins, what does he charge for one-to-one -one mentoring? One million? Million. One million. So he, right. always, he's the best of the reason on top That's of his game. That's if you can get him. If you can get him. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get him. And if you were to look into, you know, Bob Proctor or, yeah. or Paul O'Mahony, the social media, or Grant Cardone, or Ty Lopez, you, they would charge you X amount. Yeah. Now, in network marketing, you get it for free. And mm. sometimes people don't value that. No. Because you get it for free. So it's, it's unfortunate because if you paid sometimes for it, you'll value it. So it's a bit of a catch-22. But it, once I started to realize, and the more seminars you attend and, and the books you read, you start to realize that this is gold, what you've got here, to be in front of somebody who is a, whatever, an expert in their field. Yeah. To have their time, it's, it's golden. Yes. But the thing is, you see, to me, it's going back to those of us, uh, you know, from the subcontinent or our, our forefathers, mm -hmm. you know, every apprentice had a guru, didn't they? Yes. That they spent time with. Exactly. And you didn't get paid for that. No. You learned the craft, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. what is that if not mentorship? Absolutely. So true. That is so true. Because even in a religious context, yes, you can see that there has always been a guru, prophet, mentor of some shape or form. That's right. And if it, if that is prevalent in every single area of life. Mm. Why would we not do it today? And I think, I personally feel, because I'm not going to talk about myself, ego sometimes, because my <laughs> ego, when I walked in, <laughs> you can imagine network marketing, you know, I've, you know, okay, I haven't been successful at it, but I've been earning six figures. Yes. So, and I'm a lawyer, so, you know, everyone in my family and friends, oh my God, you know, you've made it in life and all these kind of things. And I thought, you know, what is he going to teach me? But then I realized that, you know, if I want, because wherever I've thought and done has got me to where I am today, yeah. if I want to go to the next level, I have to have thinking or I have to be coached, trained by somebody who's been there, who, who's there. Yeah. And that's where the magic happened when I just submitted to my senior. Yeah. Well, look, learning never ends, right? You know, mm. and as soon as you think you're at a stage, mm. you know, go into the next room. There's mm. always a guy or a girl earning twice as much as you or 10 mm. times as much as you, mm. or they've got 10 times as much time, right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, um, on, on the subject of ego, you know, wonderful book called Ego is the Enemy. Mm. Yeah. Uh, beautiful read. Yeah. So if you have time, yeah, some point. So for our mm. readers, you know, it's a great way. And, you know, ego and pride are mm. two things that get in the way. Yeah. Very so, much yeah. so. Mm. But the problem is that having those things mm. doesn't get you anything. No, no, absolutely. Right? Yeah. You know, you can be the most egotistical person or have the most pride. Mm. Yeah. You can't go to Mackie D's and get a burger with that, can you? No, no, exactly. Right? And what they do is they set us back. So sometimes you've got to have, have to swallow those, and particularly yourself. Mm. You know, fantastic profession. Mm. You know, you're a solicitor, mm. and if, as you said, job for life. Mm. You know, very well respected, especially mm. in our own community. Yes. Right? Mm. So it must have taken quite something yeah. to be able to say, actually, there's something else that I can learn here. Absolutely. I mean, things are resonating because, you know, when you do so much reading and things, mm. you know, one of my mentors said, you know, ego, E-G-O stands for edging God out. <laughs> and that hit a nerve. Yes. And uh, another one of my mentors actually lives in London. He says, ego, um, remove the E and let it go. Yeah. And one line, which it, it resonates in my head every day, Cam, he goes, do you want to be right or do you want to be rich? Mm. Because Cam, I've tried to be right my whole life. <laughs> I've just tried to be, you know, you, you, as, maybe as a lawyer, you want to be right. Absolutely. But that just gets you to be right. Yeah. And that is a form of ego because you, you, you can say you're right. I was going to say, to admit that mm. is swallowing a lot of pride and ego, isn't it? Yes, it's not yeah, easy. It's a, yeah. <laughs> so I take the money every time, right? So, if I was wrong every day yeah, yeah. and I was the richest man in the world, I, yeah, that would do, yeah. right? But look, you know, we jest. Um, so you now, you know, you're, you're a multi six figure mm. earner um, in this industry. So it's been it served you very, very well. Yes. Um, your wife's a part of it. Yeah. So, but you're also a father. Yeah. And mm. a husband and a son. How do you, you know, balance all those things? Because you know, modern day life today, we everybody talks about the work life balance, don't they? Yes. Yeah. So how do you, uh, you know, what's what's home life like for for the Palmers? Yeah. Well, I'm, um, you know. The great thing is, you know, I live with my parents. Yeah. Traditional in that sense. Mm -hmm. And I would always live with my parents. And, you know, I, I love the fact that my children have the closest access 
and the learnings and teachings from grandparents. Mm -hmm. And we work as a family. And you know, I, you know, one of my mentors said to me, you know, whatever you're going to do in life, give it 100%. So Cam, you know, when I'm with that, I'm with my son or my daughter, I give them 100%. When I'm with my wife, give it 100%. Mm -hmm. With the family, give them 100%. And because, I mean, if I was, let me go back. If I was still in uh, full-time law. I would not be with the family as much, no. especially being self-employed. I would work sometimes throughout a, you know, a good po portion of the night. Now, because I, you know, we, we, we meet people, yes. uh, meetings, and they don't take up so much time. So I yeah. spend the most time, you know, my son, you know, I, I, I sleep with my young son and my wife sleeps with our even younger daughter. Okay, yes. I, I get him dressed in the morning, I change his nappy, uh, drop him to school yeah. after I go to gym. And I pick him up from school most times. If not, then um, Rupa would do it, my wife, and I'd go to meetings or travel somewhere. And you know that's what I do every day. And my children, a little bit too young, if they get a little bit older, and if they're not going to school, I will definitely take them with me wherever I go, you know, yeah. traveling abroad or, or to meetings, because I want them to learn all the things that I've only started to learn um, not early on in life, yes. but towards the middle of my life, yeah. entrepreneurship and a different way of thinking, basically. Yeah, it's interesting because um, I was um, listening to something recently, Grant Cardone, yeah. billionaire, uh, property magnate, coach, yeah. um, travels everywhere with his family, apparently. Yeah, I see that, that's, I've seen it on Instagram all the time. Yeah, that's I interesting, that. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So tell me something, you know, traditional professions, mm. traditional uh, work mm. hours, we've had the pandemic, mm. luckily we seem to be slowly coming out of it, some kind of normality will be restored. Do you think there's a change going on in, in careers and how people work, and work-life balances and things? Oh, big, big time. I mean, you know, my parents were born in the industrial ages. Yes. You know, and that was what happens, mm. you know, you, that was that time. But now we're not in the industrial, we're in the information ages. Yes. And everything's online. Mm. And, you know, there's a saying that if your business is not online, you're going to be offline, your business is going to be out of business, basically. Yes. So I think, the way the world is moving and you know things like foreign exchange forex trading it's not hot, it's just new mm. people haven't heard it but there will be a time in the very near future i think it will be a subject at university yes you know I, um, I think one of my friends said that entrepreneurship is actually a subject that you can learn i don't know whether it's a level or degree but moving with the times i mean you can just take a look around you and just see that everything is online buying shopping money's online yes. becoming more online yes cryptocurrency things like bitcoin ethereum litecoin whatever it may be whichever coin is whatever but if money can be online everything is pretty much going in that way so you know i remember learning from bob proctor that sometimes we're learning education teaches us or gets us equipped for a world which is no longer the same it's actually mm -hmm. moving mm -hmm. so the traditional way of doing things i mean you know during the pandemic if i was in court i'd be on virtual yes from home doctors giving advice through webinars or telephone advice. So you're not, you know, and then when you're doing things online, then what's, what's stopping robots from doing that? Yes. And what's stopping people from different countries doing that? So I think definitely, you know, having multiple sources of income is not even a, you know, a luxury. It's actually something which is really required. Yeah. Because job security really, that's really a myth nowadays. Yeah, and I think you know the, the key for me, what you've hit upon, is relying on one income. Yeah. It's just not good enough any longer. You know, oh. it's not going to secure the future of your family. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, because I'm I'm a multi-business owning individual, yeah. and uh, and people will say, why are you going into this? Mm. Because I want multiple streams of income. Yeah. You know, mm. so and and what we've learned from the pandemic is certain industries have absolutely boomed, yeah. and other industries have been wiped out. Yeah. So if you had one of the ones that were wiped out, you know, you're finished now, aren't you? Yeah. So if you had two or three different incomes, mm -hmm. then, you know, one of your, you know, it's like legs, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You know, if you've got four of them, one of them goes, you may still be able to stand. Yeah, but yeah. if you only have one, you're in trouble, aren't you? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So do you see this as a, as a movement in terms of people in professions such as yourself mm -hmm. having second and third incomes? being entrepreneurs mm. and because as you said you don't need infrastructure anymore yeah, yeah you need a phone or a laptop <laughs> yeah, yeah. right and one of those will do won't it and you can trade around the clock yeah. around the world Absolutely. so do you see that as, a, as something that going forward that 
you know, as you said, it's, a, it's, it's great to have. Yeah. Do you think more and more people will be doing that? Absolutely. I mean, we've got, you know, before it may have been, like I said, a choice, but mm. now it's, it's, it's a requirement because I've just seen COVID has put businesses out of business mm. and, and the recognized brands that we've known, loved and trust for X amount of years, yes. all of a sudden have declared, you know, whatever, gone into administration yeah. or bankruptcy. Um, you know, it's, it's really and truly success principles that we learn. And one of them is having, you know, Bob Proctor calls it MSI, multiple sources of income. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember reading once that the average millionaire has five sources of income. That's right. So I, when I was doing law, I thought, I've only got one source of income, which may, is paying me good. But what happens if that suddenly stops? So I, I just looked to increase it. So you know, you've got Forex trading. Then I thought, OK, cryptocurrency you know, buying mm -hmm. or cryptocurrency uh, trading. Uh, you've got drop shipping, which the company also do. You've got network marketing. So almost overnight, Cam. Yeah. It wasn't even I've got two. It became three or four. And, you know, they may not have paid immediately, but in due course, the multiple sources of income yeah. is what gives you freedom. And, you know, I think now, nowadays it's, I mean, you just need to go on Instagram and just see how many, you know, social media millionaires or social right. media have been created. And it's through different, different things. Yeah. Influencers, brand influencers or a certain product that they're, they're very creative upon, whether it's Forex, whether it's dropshipping. It's, it's there now. It's in front of us. Yeah. So everyone will have no choice but to embrace some shape or form, something online. Yeah. So what we provide is very much today's product it's it's in demand yeah and people are only going to get more and more educated about it okay you know time waits for no man so we're almost at the end of the show mm. uh, what i'd like you to do is you know take yourself back um mm. to the days you're at university yeah. so for, for our youngsters that are watching today yeah. what advice would you give to the young Vinay? Uh, mm. that is either just mm. about finishing university mm. or at, at that kind of stage where they're thinking mm. about careers mm. or indeed thinking about what type of courses to, uh, to take. Yeah, I think, first of all, if I look back at university, Cam, all I wanted to do was have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to get into business, but yes. I just, I mean, I think it's some part of me. I, only, I became a lawyer because I just love uni life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just loved it. You know, the, the parties and, 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 and just being free no stress and you know i wish i just i i wish i had a certain hunger yeah i wish i wanted more out of life i mm. would have taken action mm. and if i look back and, and in answer to your question what would i have done i would have just been open or curious about everything and try to you know because a lot of people and including myself you sometimes dismiss things because of certain stigmas yeah and if i was to do it again i'll definitely be more open I just be more open and say, um, look, let me look at this. Let me look at this opportunity. Let me, let me read up about that. Let me learn about this. Let me attend this course. If I had done that, things would have been very, very different today. Fantastic. So open your mind. Open your mind. Look at alternatives. Yeah. Because we had Nina Sandu here and she was doing mm. this at university, wasn't she? Yes. Very lucky. Yeah. Very <laughs> successful girl. Yeah. So absolutely fantastic. Been, a, been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Cam. Been a pleasure for me as well. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. And come back and share your story with us sometime in the future. Because we love always. success <laughs> and we love success from our own community yeah. and our own community, helping our own community mm -hmm. to spread that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ken. So that's all we have for you tonight. End of another show. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it'll be on YouTube um, either now or at some point. And, uh, you know, a story of a young entrepreneur, very, very successful in the chosen profession. And sometimes that's enough, you know, and if that's enough for you, then so be it. But you know, the world is changing. No job today is safe. You know, if we're not under the threat of, you know, uh, things changing, industries changing, customer habits changing, then we're under the threat of automation. Robots are coming, you know. So lots and lots of challenges face us in the future. So if you're at the beginning of your career, if you're at the beginning of education, Open your mind, have a look at these alternative opportunities that we've got. And otherwise, you'll be in serious trouble. So until next week, we'll have another amazing guest for you. And have a, a great week. And thank you so much for watching. Good night.